Hello and welcome to another live demonstration. As always, I want to keep it simple. Today I want to talk about black on white and white on black. Um, black on white, you're probably very familiar with. You can see with this study, charcoal on white paper, using the white paper to um, show the light areas and you can use an eraser to take it back. So that's the black on white. Quite a traditional, you're probably quite familiar with it. You can also do black on white. And this is a little bit more difficult to observe. You're observing just the light areas. So on black paper, you've just used the white pastel to show where the light is hitting the figure and try and bring out areas that show that there's a figure there. So this is a lot of looking at shapes, not just looking at a figure, but looking at the shapes the light makes. Um, again, painting like this or drawing like this, what you leave out is just as valid as what you put in. And I like using a black paper. You may have seen quite a number of my demonstrations are done on the black paper because I think it just adds a little bit of something different to the normal white, black on white. And it is a different way of looking. So you'll see both of those were the same subject, one with the light, one with the looking at the shadows. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to do a little demonstration of a black cat on black paper. Why have I chosen a black cat? Because today is Friday the 13th. And I know for some it's seen as an unlucky day. In other cultures it's not, it's, it's a, a lucky day. Um, and black cats, again, are seen in some cultures as unlucky or in other cultures they're seen as lucky. So I thought this crossed all of the look and I like cats anyway and a black cat is, would look really nice on black paper and it would just show um, what I'm trying to explain about what you need to leave out. So what I'm using today is the Derwent Artist Pencils and these are the blacks and the whites. So you have here three whites and three darks or blacks. I would do a swatch for you, but I tried it earlier and the camera wasn't really picking up the differences in the colours. But what you have is you have a pure white, so a clean white, and you have a warm white, so it's a little bit pinker. And then you have a cool white, which is a little bit bluer. Um, I can see the colours here and I can see the colours of the core, but it really didn't show up hugely on the black paper. Um, I can see it when you put it on, but the cameras can't. And the same with the blacks, you've got a warm, so a browner black, a bluer black, and then an, a black black, a true black. And again, they're really interesting, this set's interesting to work with, it's something you have to learn to kind of see the real differences in black if you want a really true black or maybe you want a much more subtle black. I'm going to be using um, the pure, the really white one at the moment because it makes no really difference. As I said, the cameras didn't really pick up the differences in the set. Um, this is a little blunt at the moment, but as I finish doing the areas um, that I need the blunt area for, I will sharpen it. And these pencils sharpen with a, a normal plastic sharpener, which actually comes in this set. So I'm going to start with the eyes because I think if you start with the eyes, it helps you to decide how much or how little you need to do. So I'm just going to look at the light. So technically this is going to be black and white, but there's going to be all kinds of gray in between, depending on how heavy I push on with the pencil and how much of the black shows through. So I'm put, putting this on quite gently at the moment because it's easier to put it on than it is to take it off. But these pencils do take off quite easily. I've got a little white plastic eraser. Um, I've just exposed the edge so I can use it for any sharp areas. And I use the softened end just for big areas. If I, if I feel I've gone too far, I take it back. Literally take it back out. Um, so I'm just looking at where the lightest lights are in his eyes because I want them to feel rounded and there's a 
a nice round area. This is um, a picture from one of my colleagues, Jackie, because I was I have had black cats, but I haven't really got very many photos of them. And at the moment, my cats are ginger and a torty, so that didn't fit into the criteria. So I'm just look, really looking at the light because I think if you get the eyes right, the rest of it kind of, you don't need to work as hard. So it's quite light under here. So I'm just going to strengthen off and that's just layering the white and you can see that coming up. Light across here. So the light is hitting at the bottom of the eye. Just... Also, one tip to keep things sharp is to turn your pencil. So I'm turning it as I'm using it, and that will keep it sharper. But you can see why I needed a much softer um, edge, because I wanted to colour and just blend and soften and work on. I'm trying to get that sharp. Stand back, try this one. I'll come back to that and I can strengthen and add just some highlights if I feel I need to. So just look again at the bottom, the light on this eye is at the bottom again with that really harsh. And I'm looking at the shapes, I, I'm not really looking at an eye as such, I'm looking at it as a shape. Sorry, I'm just wanting to bring that really nice highlight in the eye. That's going to be done. I think that just makes it ping out. Then I stop. If I get it the right strength I need, then I can walk away from it and I don't have to keep working on it. And that's the hard bit. So I know if I didn't put that highlight in, I would just want to keep going back to it. So I'm just filling out and using the same colour, which is white. I'm just getting lots of different tones, constantly looking. Step back because it needs to tone up a little bit. It's still a bit too grey. I can come back and add much more white in there. It's okay. So now I'm going to look at um, what I need to put in. So the nose I'm going to keep and I'm, I can see from the photograph he does have a little bit of a lighter nose. That's probably where the um, light is hitting it. And again just really quite gently and using the circular motion because the nose has some texture on it. It's, it's kind of that rough texture. Um, and I find if you, the eye I've created quite, quite smoothly, but the texture on the nose I can create by using the texture of the paper, using the texture of the pencil, and adding different textures and feels within the drawing you know, just takes it a stage up. If it's all very much the same, very flat, it, it, it works, but you can make it even better by adding different textures. And that's what artists are talking about when they talk about the textures. I keep looking back at the subject, even though I've got the image already down, I will keep looking back because I just want to continually adjusting looking at maybe where I need to just strengthen the light. So a little hair around his nose here. They're all very short usually. And you can just see how it's catching that. This works well. So what I could have also have done is I could also have changed this into grayscale or black and white. And that again will have helped with um, light areas and dark areas. What I am going to be quite careful about is um, 
not putting too much on, keeping it quite simple. So the hairs on the nose, they go forward. So you can see, I will follow the direction of the hair on the cat. And this will help you make it look much more realistic. So there's little hairs here. And to be honest, you could just walk away from that. I think that's got something. It's giving you the impression of a cat. But I want, I want to add a little bit more. Just adding a little bit of light here. But I want to keep that side quite dark because the light is hitting from here. So let's start. I think he's, he's, he's not a totally smooth cat, he looks like. So this is where I'm going to use the sharpener because I th think I need to add a little bit more detail. I want to do and show the hair. So normal sharpener. And then you get quite a nice point. And like I say, by twisting it as you use it, you should be able to keep the point um, on the pencil a little longer. Just looking at the light, so it's hitting here. I want to give him a structure, basically, across the top of his head. And you'll see how I'm going to change, because at the moment that looks quite um, even. So I will change that up a little bit soft lines here so I'm constantly thinking is this too much am I adding too much detail am I putting too much on at the moment it's fine I haven't gone too far and I'm looking at the light because I think the light works here and his fur gets a little bit longer but I'm constantly looking at the way the fur goes, so under his eye here, and then just going up. And that kind of thing is really important, especially when you are trying to do an animal or even human. Just look at the direction of the fur, not, I mean the hair, not the fur on a human. Look at the direction of a fur on an animal and the hair on a human, and it's changing the direction of your pencil rather than doing everything same will really make a difference. Again I'm turning the pencil as I use it. The moment this is quite light um, and actually not a huge amount of detail. So this side wants a lot less but I do need a little indication of the length of his ear. Maybe a little indication here. I'm getting on to being quite sketchy again. I was going to keep this quite detailed, but I, quite, I like a sketchy feel. So just bringing out the shape of his head and looking at the direction of the fur. So this will go in a little bit more. Bring out those tiny hairs because his eyelid, the eye is here and then they, they have a little um, darker area above the eye and you can see that and that's by just suggesting it, it makes it look a little bit more realistic. And here the hair goes over and it comes around like this and you can see just by a little bit of a suggestion of direction it really does make it look much more realistic so still quite light I'm not going to yet put the really light detail on I think that can be done at the end when I have stopped building up so nose needs to come up a little bit more Give it a little bit more structure. Like I say, I can't all, I can't see 
with the light as much. It's, it's kind of flattened it a lot for me. So that's why I tend to stand away just so I can um, look and judge. So that's why I, I move a lot. For you, you can walk away. You can come back. You can get to a certain point and just go and have a cup of tea and then come back to what you're doing. And that is such a useful exercise. Best I can do is just to stand back on the stage and go. So I need a little bit of structure around here just to show that you can feel the shape of his head. Right, let's show a little bit of, and I am keeping this really, I'm thinking to myself, how much do I need to do? How little can I do? And that is my challenge. So he has little areas for whiskers. I'm going to concentrate on the bell because I'm going to just bring out the light. So this can be a sharp image. It's going to be um, much cleaner. So I'm looking at the shadow on the bell. Again, using a light and a heavier touch just to bring out the shadow. Catching. So I need to, a little bit sharper, so I need to just add a little bit more of a point to my pencil. And you can see there that really helps just crisp off because it's a metallic bell. So I want to show that it is different to the fur. And that's what I'm going to just work on. Got a question for you? Amy. Yes. It's quite almost a philosophical question. Okay. On uh, why generally do you paint and draw? What do you get out of it? Um... There's many different things. There's, I need to do things to demonstrate. That's one thing. But I've always done it. And it's, you kind of get away from everything while you're drawing. My brain is working overtime and I'm constantly thinking and judging and reviewing. But it, you get really engrossed in what you're drawing. I enjoy it. It's the main thing. I enjoy it. I love learning new skills learning new techniques, learning from other artists, look, you know, going to galleries and having a look and say, oh, I, that technique and looking at masters and getting as close as you can, which a gallery allows, and seeing how the paint is put on and walking away from the painting and see how it changes and, you know, all that kind of thing. So it, to be honest, a lot of artists will find it's their life. I know professional artists, that even when they're on holiday or where they are everywhere, they're drawing, they're sketching, they're thinking about their next project. It's something that doesn't stop. If you've got that creative spark in you, it's something that you just don't ever stop doing. And I know um, if I'm away, I will always have a camera and I'll always be thinking, oh, that would make a great painting or that would make a great, um, you know, in this medium. Often I look at a subject and I can think, oh, it looked good in this medium. So it's all to do with, it makes you feel good. And I know it also has that, can be very frustrating. And I know when people are going, it's not working, I can't do it, it's not working. I, I get that. So often I get, I kind of go, that didn't work. Even though, you know, I may have done it before, I may be quite competent in that medium number of times that it just doesn't work and I get frustrated and kind of go, it just isn't working, I can't do it. But I don't usually let that stop me. I usually try something different. That's where I like to think, well, if it's not working this way, how can it work? Um, so I always advise people, a lot of people ask me what they do if they have artistic block. They just don't know what to draw. And my answer is literally draw anything. Draw something that's in front of you a cup and don't my my main tip is don't draw for a reason 
there's no reason it doesn't have to be an end product doesn't have to finish it doesn't have to be for a reason just do it because you want to make marks on paper you want to see what this product does oh no that that wasn't quite what I anticipated but I quite like parts of it and just do it that's my only thing don't do it as a final piece don't have a finished piece walk away from a, a, a piece that's not finished you know and then come back to it because actually you'll surprise yourself and think oh actually I like it as it is a lot of my pieces look quite unfinished a lot of it is because I need to f do things quite quickly and I need to get things finished in a short time because you're going to get bored of me going on and blathering about this and that. So a lot of my projects are quite short. So sometimes it's really different to do a longer project and actually spend days on something. So I choose a medium that suits that, like oils. Oils, you need to keep coming back and spend a bit more time. OK, so I think he's building up. I can still keep working. And actually, I think I might do something over here. Like I say, there comes a time when you've worked too much. Don't know if I've got enough shape in his face here. Or enough. Right, I've worked too much on this. I want to take him back. So I'm just going to use an eraser and literally take out some of this area here. I overdid it. I was talking too much. That's not like you. <laughs> funny uh, <laughs> but you can see how actually nicely these um, pencils um, are removed from cartridge paper but actually sometimes taking areas out or leaving areas help the subject like I say I can't overly see this so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to finish by just really bringing out some of the areas I want to show as light and that's with a tougher pencil back into the eye just really give it that lovely because he's looking up he's got a lovely dome on his eye I actually don't know if it's a he or she I think it's a he and just really add that highlight let's bring a little bit more into the nose I'll just add a little bit of texture by dotting around the nose because they have that rough little nose and then a little bit more because it's a black cap so a bit lighter on this side and you can see there by just adding a little bit more light how you can take the composition up a little bit to another level just Right, he's not got whiskers yet, so they usually have a few coming from the eye, and then they have a few here. Again, I don't want to over I want to give you a suggestion of um, whiskers. I don't want to overdo it, and this is a great exercise for learning how to resist overworking. I think I can leave it at that. Because all, all I'll keep doing is I'll add bits to it and then I'll take it back off again. And this is why I say walk away. So I hope you like that. I hope you can see what's actually the point of leaving things out. How I think taking that bit out there, for me, I don't know if you can see it, it's just make it I could probably take a little bit more out if I was thinking about it a little bit more. But you don't need to do every little detail of a drawing. Sometimes the suggestion, and this is with that question earlier, you know, why do I, I draw? Because I enjoy putting something on paper and, and seeing how something will develop. And it doesn't always happen in the way you expect. And the unexpected is, is something you can really learn from. So I hope you enjoyed that. So the black cat on black paper on Friday the 13th, fingers crossed, touch wood, if you um, are worried about anything like that. Um, and join us next week for something a little different. So next week we will have a number of different artists in. 
with different mediums or doing live demonstration for you on the Tuesday and the Wednesday. Um, as well as Jeremy Ford on the Friday. Um, so next week is packed with live demos. So I hope you join us and tune in and um, hope you enjoyed this demo and join us soon.